Mark Sheets Haber and uh, Sheets, you did it again. Let's let's uh, let's get into it. That was awesome. Uh, talk a little bit about yesterday. Yeah. So as you guys remember, it was a seven thirty um, slate start, um, and I had uh, excuse me, it was a seven o'clock slate start, but I had no, it was a seven thirty slate start, but the first game wasn't you know I didn't think it was that big of a deal or whatever. Um, so I, I put in my stuff. I had to go to dinner. I, I put my stuff at 645. I knew I'd be back by about 845. So if I needed to change anything from the Boston game, I'd be able to do it. But uh, the rest, I was just kind of just, you know, just had to put in what I what, what I put in. Um, and I got back and I, I, I did late swap whatever I got to I got to. And what happened was I kind of watched the end of the Toronto game and not Toronto. I still, I still, I still think Van Vliet's on Toronto. I watched the end of the Houston game and believe it or not, like Fred Van Vliet for the last like four minutes, like got nothing. Um, and I was looking and, and I was in first place, but I had, you know, what, 300 points or whatever it is. And there was still Giannis and, 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 Fox and all these guys, their games are about to start. I really didn't even think for a minute that this was live, you know, for, for a little bit. And then all of a sudden I looked and I saw it was actually, it wasn't that the, that the, you know, those late games weren't still yet to start. They were still a quarter in. So I'm like, okay, so I can yeah. actually look and take a look at it. And then I saw that Fox had like 20 points after the first quarter and Giannis was killing it. I'm like, so I just presume that these guys, someone was going to be freaking chasing me or whatever. And the other thing I noticed was that Josh Hart scored like 63 fantasy points for the Knicks, and I didn't have him either. So I just figured that somebody was just going to come and track me down. And then at halftime, I, I looked around and and I had a shot. I, I what I needed was was believe it or not was Harrison Barnes to not continue to smash and then Giannis to have a really kind of a bad like fourth quarter or the game just blow out and, and me not be, might mean I have to deal with these guys in the fourth quarter. And then that's pretty much what happened. Like the end of the third quarter, there was like a 22 point game. And then I'm like, okay, they're going to put Giannis in at some point, but I don't know how much they're going to play him. And uh, even when they got it to 30, uh, they left Fox in for a couple of minutes longer than I would have liked, and and just nobody was able to track me down, and and this just just this held. Now I have a couple of uh, of comments. Uh, number one is that, um, yeah, the Boston guys, you know, they they obviously performed well, and this Jameson play got there. But one thing I noticed about this lineup, which is, it's, I don't want to ch- say challenges a concept that you had, but it's very interesting, is that. I didn't have anybody with that was like sub 10%, yeah. but like all these guys were like, kind of like, like not that chalky, you know what I mean? Like right. a whole bunch of twenties and you get a whole bunch of twenties. It's not that bad in the five fifty, you know, in the five fifty five. Well, um, especially like on a small, I would say also like I would add to that as on a smaller five fifty five with, you know, half right. the pool, a little, little, actually less than half the pool of usual. It that you right. definitely can get away with it more. That's right. And it's a kind of slate where there were so many guys who showed up as value that there was, there were, you know, just all the 20 percenters getting the right 20 percenters together last night could definitely work. And it, and it obviously did for you. That's incredible. So, and, and listen, you know, you, you say, uh, don't call it luck or whatever. The fact is that Shea had 20 fantasy points in the first half. That okay. doesn't mean anything. I'm, well, I'm just saying. And then, and then, you know, that, that, and Giannis was basically smashing, but they just, you know, the game blew out. And they just, right. and that was the end of that. So obviously very, very happy about that and uh, very fortunate and uh, continuing to try. But again, uh, I did, uh, it was probably due in part to the, that I did make it back to that late swap. I did get both Hauser and Derek White in the lineup, which was, which obviously was a big deal. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Nice. Well, that's awesome, man. It was great to see you. I was thrilled uh, you hung on. We're in totally opposite worlds right now where I'm like genuinely considering stopping playing NBA this season. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to actually play, but like, I really thought about it because it's, it's been so horrendous. 
Yeah. Um, and I can't seem to figure out exactly what I'm doing wrong, but it has absolutely been garbage. And it's great to see that at least, at least, you know, you're carrying the torch for all of us because it's been a, it's been a hell of a run, man. Um, anyway, congrats again. And, uh, yeah, we can get into tonight's slate yeah. and uh, see if we can make it a six figure instead of a, instead of just yeah. a 50 K <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Um, okay. So there was one, I got to remember there's one guy who I didn't project that I wanted to ask you about that I, I should, but it's going to be another, I guess, another slate with a bunch of Q tags and shit shows and, you know, not knowing who's playing for Memphis and Toronto and, and, and all that stuff. But what's cool, what's cool about this slate is that it's a quick one uh, in that mm-hmm. first game is at seven and the last game is at eight, is at eight thirty. So, so there's not like a whole night of, of late swapping and stuff. It's just, you, know, you really need to pay attention for about an hour and a half and that's about it, um, mm-hmm. which is obviously good for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, the, 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 the no late swap is probably gonna be Friday. Is that, is that going to be sort of the thing? Uh, I'm just kind of, I think that's what they're going with for for right now. Okay. All right. So I guess we could just kind of get started here. Um, I, Br- Brooklyn, Orlando, uh, I don't really have anything here. Um, unless, unless I'm. Unless I'm missing something, uh, I don't. I don't have anybody as a top even twenty or twenty five value at all. You, you combine that with the fact that it's the seven o'clock game. I just. I. I don't know if I can get too much of anything. Yeah, I think that uh, Bridges is the only one that 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 uh, that you know I have a little bit of interest in. So I would say that Bridges is. I think Bridges is, is probably it. Actually, to be honest, uh, I really am having a hard time finding anything else. Uh, maybe taking a shot on Cam Thomas, but really not not the game for me either. Uh, just throwing out the possibilities; those would be the only guys I would use. So let's let's actually let's let's, let's talk for a second. I was thinking about this a little bit earlier, um, since you know you're you're thinking about about the NBA in general and you know what you might do differently, what you might think differently. And I always I always consider like how to think about things differently, things like that. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about DFS, and this is like NBA or any sport. It, it's it's like okay so at the baseline there are plays and then and then the plays become lineups and then the lineups become part of a portfolio of lineups and and, and one thing that at least I, I try to think about is is to not think of any plays in terms of plays and what's weird is that like when we do it we think about the, okay this looks like a good play this looks like a good play and then when I actually run stuff I don't play any of them you know what I mean it's like weird in a way because like because you don't play eight plays you play a lineup of eight players you know what i mean like i, I don't know exactly I'm, I'm probably not even saying it the right way but um but uh i don't know so so yeah. again just and we, we you know we ran into this when we had all these like 5k guys like earlier in the season that mm-hmm. all looked terrible but because the way lineup construction had to work we right. had to play them you know right. um so I'm, I don't know. Uh, I think I just threw yeah. that out conceptually. Yeah, no, no, no. And it's true. And, and, and but, but I mean, I, I'm gone through all the, uh, like, I, I, I've paid close attention to all your things. I actually watched your video. I, I, I know, you know what I mean? I'm just kind of thinking about yeah. it. And also like, I mean, and, and the truth is I have to look at myself realistically. I, I, I looked, I went through, uh, uh, yesterday, I went through my last, or no, not yesterday, uh, Sunday, 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 maybe. Um, I went through all of my last 20 tournaments and 16 of them that, that I played in the large buy-in, I had somebody injured. So that's not something I can ever do. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like 16, that's, that's 80% out of 20, but still there were other, there were other times in, in the, at other times where I was taking too many chances on low owned things, but they were low owned things that I really liked. And uh, you know, it feels like I, they used to hit more and it feels like I've, 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 I've got to build a, a little bit chalkier. So I'm trying to, trying to adjust to that. And uh, the other part is it's not that I don't want to play. Like I, I still enjoy it. I still believe I have an edge at some point. I, if I can get back to my myself, I can get on something, you know, but, um, but I, I feel like I've, I've just, it's, it's just, it's brutal to watch your money just drain down the toilet. Every day. I'll, I'll tell you something else, which is interesting. Um, uh, and again, I don't know what the answer is. I talked about this uh, like a week ago when someone, someone had posted that they were so proud that they were able to, that they're able to build lineups now that, that you know, even if they don't hit you know the top, they have a chance to like you know to to just make a little bit of money. And and I was commenting that that's really just not the way to look at it, you know. Um, and 
the other thing is that we, we, we focused on and listen, a lot of this is obviously is luck, but I mean, I happen to have run like so pure in mm-hmm. that. I don't think I have like any like top 10 finishes that like weren't wins. Yeah. You know that's been mean? pretty incredible, which is weird. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and I'd love to say that there was some reason that I played a certain way to make it that way, but that's just not the case. So that that's, and that's something you can't control too. Mm-hmm. Is that all these seconds and thirds and sevenths and stuff like that? Right. Um, I don't know. It's a, again. I, I, yeah. It's, yeah. It's no. There's variants, and and I was just more mentioning it as a frustration. I mean, look. No, no. I'm not. I am not the guy who who gets frustrated and then goes, "Oh, well, f this. I don't care. I, I'm I'm angry that it's just sheets wins and I don't know. I'm thrilled that you win. It means nothing. It has nothing. No, that one doesn't not. have any takeaway from the other. I just am frustrated because Ooh. I am. Going, you know, you go, you go through stretches in DFS, and this has been a longer one than usual. And I'm in the middle of it right now, so I'm trying to adjust my play and trying to, uh, you know, account for it. My feeling is I don't want to do it anymore, but I, I don't want to do it this season. But I'm totally going to do it. We know that's the reality, especially because I have content I have to get out and <laughs> all that. But I am going to do my best and uh, to turn it around. At the rest, you know, we got plenty of time left. All right. So Toronto, Detroit. I actually am getting just like all kinds of stuff here. Um, so again, what I was getting at is I was looking at it in terms of plays. Like, like for example, like I put my sheets up here and I see, like literally, this is all there is. Like Toronto, Detroit, Toronto, Toronto, Detroit, Detroit, Toronto, Detroit, 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 Detroit. Detroit. Okay. Now I think in this particular slate, it, it's the, the the good plays are just going to translate to the good lineups, but it doesn't always work that way. Um, but I guess right off the bat, I guess if, we have to worry about who's playing. Obviously, like. Uh, quickly is questionable and if he's out it becomes that whole you know that whole shit show from yesterday from the other day but assuming that he plays he looks like a really strong play gary trent jr 5600 looks good bruce brown back again at 5100 looks good kelly olinick sounds like a lot at 7k but but he looks pretty good good matchup and all that on the detroit side the same guys as before you know cunningham duran uh, isaiah stewart uh, then, then, then Ivy and Osar Thompson. I think that right off the bat, you could just play a bunch of guys in this game. Fade Luca. Hope this goes off. You know, I think that's that's certainly something you could do. Yep. Um, I mean, look, I, it, it's weird because Toronto is is definitely actively trying to lose. Uh, I don't care that they got off they got off to a crazy start and all that stuff in in, in that Denver game. I actually don't even think it's that questionable that based on their rotation that they were trying to lose the game down the stretch. Um, uh, the other night, they, 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 they don't, it's not that they have to lose every game, but again, like I said, they were going to lose their draft pick, which is probably more important than what you would. I mean, like literally draft picks these days, if you're a top 20 player in the NBA to get a first round pick from a team like this is that's, that's the kind of equivalent you're talking about. So they're basically losing that, that value. Um, anyway, so look, I, 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 I'm, I always have a hard time with them because I, I have a feeling all, you know, there's always that chance i think you're gonna have to play some of them so i guess i'll just go through the ones like if they pl- assuming that that whoever you know trenton quickly are still questionable we'll see about that but i, I would go dick quickly um probably agbaji or brown as my three favorites right now now it'll change a lot if trent and quickly are out uh brown i think is very speculative if he comes off the bench but Hey, another place that he came from again. It's like the Bruce Brown revenge tour. Like every night, it's like t- it's a former <laughs> team of his. So, uh, so yeah. I, I mean, look, I, I just I, I'd like to see a starting lineup, and the good news is it's an early game, so we'll have a starting lineup. And uh, that's that's really all I know what to say with the Toronto side because with, without those without the starting lineup, without without you know with the situation with quickly and uh, and Trent, I just if those guys are in. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll 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 leave it with the guys I said, and if they're out, uh, we're basically probably going to be playing three or four of them. And on the Detroit side, uh, I'm just going to mention again: they have not raised Cade Cunningham's price enough. It's a great matchup. Uh, I like Cade Cunningham is my favorite play. Uh, everybody else, yeah, they project well. There's a lot like these guys have. They're like I wouldn't play Stewart and Duran Duran together. Um, Asar Thompson being questionable uh, makes me like, I, I don't know if Asar's out, we just go right back to Fontecchio. In fact, you could probably play Fontecchio anyway. Um, but I kept Cunningham, Thompson, and then Ivy are my le- highest level of interest. But I have no issue if you want to play Duran or Stewart. That's where I'm at here. 
Um, all right. Next up, what do you got here? I have Chicago, Indiana. Um, Indiana's on a back-to-back, uh, coming off that uh, pretty tough game uh, yesterday. Um, and uh, they're against Chicago. I'm getting to three Indiana guys right off the bat here, both bigs, Jalen Smith and, and Miles Turner. And then also I'm getting some uh, Pascal Siakam and some Neesmith, who I usually don't like to play, so we'll have to talk about him. On Chicago, I mean, again, just sprinkles, but a little bit of Vooch always. Getting like a little bit of Ayo's to Sumno right now, mm-hmm. um, maybe just because of pricing and a little bit of Caruso just because of pricing and stuff. Um, but like anything else, it's like, you know, it's a pace up spot for Chicago, pace down spot for Indiana. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me just see what and the result of that. They did end up getting that that win in OKC. That's a, that's a big win. Um, mm-hmm. That's a pretty big win. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, that, that's pretty much what happened. This game. Yeah, yeah, I was impressed by that win as well. Um, uh, I like DeRozan and White the best. Uh, I don't know which ones I would pick, uh, which which I'm going to pick him, but I like Vooch as well. I think they're all in play. Uh, people like the Caruso and Disone Moore. You got you got to factor all these guys in in this matchup, like just because it's so it's so premium. Um, I think I think that DeRozan, White, Vooch, Caruso, Disone Moore are my levels of interest, but I definitely have some interest level in all of them. So. It's I, the Bulls. I, f- I find myself doing the same thing a lot with them. And this is actually, I, I don't even think it's a mistake. I, it's like literally whatever fits in best with the way that, you know, like if it's a guard heavy slate, I'm more likely to play DeRozan. If it's a center heavy, if, I'm sorry, if it's a, if it's a forward or heavy slate or whatever, maybe I'm more likely to play Vooch. Um, but it really, I, I feel like they're all very similar in that one of them is usually going to get there. I also worry about like, they got crushed the other night at home. And I just always worry about this, you know, an Indiana at home thing because Indiana plays so fast that they can they can put a beat down on you in a hurry. The Bulls are going to fight because they they need to win games, but um, just just something I always consider a little bit of uh, on the indie side of it. Uh, yeah, pace down spot, but I do like that seventy two hundred price on Siakam. Um, that's I I guess that's my highest level of interest. I, I don't understand why the projections love them quite as much as they do. Um, I don't really understand the, the knee Smith or Turner. Sure. But it's like Turner is the same as he always is. It's a worse matchup. Okay. Like, is it really that bad of a slate that we need to, that all these guys are going to be so popular Tyrese Halliburton. You've been getting at less than half a percent or, or 1% of ownership. Now he's supposed to be 20%. I just don't buy all this, this stuff. So I'm going to have to revisit this one later because I think these projections are just way too hot early in early in the day. Um, that's my take. I mean, needless to say, also, I mean, Indiana could be, could be, this is a, this is a, this is a sneaky bad spot for Indiana. You know what I mean? Like, uh, coming, coming off the, the road game against Oklahoma City, that game, that game went fast, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, it's, it's when Indiana, they, they crank up that freaking pace. It's tough. I mean, I even saw Shea, like, like, but, 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 but OKC plays really fast too. Like, it's not like, right. They, yeah. Right. So that play was really fast, and this they're coming off a big win. They're, they're coming home, and it's, it could be a slog. I don't know. It's uh anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, did you did you comment on Nee Smith again? Like he's a guy I just don't like to play. Just, there's 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 no rhyme. I, I I don't think there's a rhyme or reason to his stuff. Okay. So playing him as chalk just always feels foolish to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it, look, if you it, can, he have games. Sure. Um, there's no Matherin, so they're still trying to make up for that. Like, but um, why, why, why McConnell? Why not McConnell instead? You know, um, that's actually a guy you know who gets to that ceiling a little bit more often. So I, I might lean a little bit more towards McConnell. I think the pro- I just think the projections this morning are going to be very different by this afternoon, and it just feels like a little. T- and even Neesmith's projection isn't that great for 25 percent ownership. Um, right. So it's it's just a lack of value, but my guess is other value comes up, and these guys end up far lower on than what they're being projected. Uh, okay, what do you have next? Denver against Miami. Um, right. Oh, I, I I don't even know why I bring this up, but, but uh, I see Kevin Love is out. I guess he's been out forever. But but uh, I saw his name last night. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Demontis Sabonis had his forty seventh straight like double double. Amazing. Um, 
And I, I think he just just passed like Kevin Love or something like that. That's uh, really amazing. Put him up on the screen. Yeah. Um, so I uh, am not really getting to Jokic. I'm getting more to Luka than to Jokic at that price. So uh, that's why I'm not getting to him. And aside from that, um, just scrolling down and just just not getting to much of anything in this game. Uh, do you have? Is there anything that stands out to you at all? Uh, I think this is the kind of game that Jimmy Butler. I would want to play him. Um, okay. Projections be damned. We know the rules with him. Uh, yeah, there are no. Yeah, there are no rules. <laughs> Well, no, there, no, there yeah. are. They're very clear. Oh, right. right. I mean, like you know. Yeah, he, when he's in a tough spot, and 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 when when they're in a when they're in a tough spot, they're trying and they're trying to win games. Um, it's different than you know anything in the early half of the season, unless it's like a rivalry thing. But against Denver, it's a big game. You know, it's a big game. Obviously, you're playing the defending champion, the championship favorite this year. Um, I think that uh, Jimmy Butler is a, is an excellent tournament play. Um, and I actually like the idea of getting to one of he, Bam, or Rogier a little bit. Uh, I, th- I think this should be a close game, and I and I and I'm a, I'm on the Butler side of it. I, I think Butler is, you know, a, a good get different play. And 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 look, there's no right, there's no right or wrong. You see guys win sometimes with lineups where you have four guys at like sub three percent. You see Sheets win it all last night with nobody below twenty percent. There are different ways to do things. Um, but Jimmy Butler, I mean, if, if you want to just go through just since the All Star break. Like we've mo- we've seen the the more explosive than we have the the non you know it's just not been it, it it hasn't been in the last few games and it doesn't equal his averages but you know a little bit of a downtick the last I guess it was the last three but you know he had fifty five right before that fifty seven um, forty nine like now we in fifty one um, now we want a little bit more than that fifty fifty eight right before that I mean he was really on a streak what do you have four Five uh, five fifty eight five fifty five pluses and five fifty one pluses in, in uh, six nights. Um, I think that he's an interesting tournament play. So right now, because everyone will play, and I'm going to too. I like Cunningham. I like quickly at the same, and these are all like the same price. Butler as a third piece at that price feels like a a completely unowned uh, build and a completely unowned Butler. And I think he's he's my favorite piece in this game. Uh, everyone else is very just fringy. Never going to argue with Jokic. Worst matchup possible for him. But look, you could play him on on this slate because uh, there's not a you know. You, you, well, I don't know if you could. It's going to be hard to play him over over Luca ever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right, we can move on to the uh, to the next one. Yeah. So Charlotte, Memphis. Uh, well, I guess we'll just I guess we'll just start start with Charlotte. Uh, not not having have too much of a level of interest there, except to say that Brandon Miller has been playing really well, uh, 7,300 and, and Memphis, they, they, they bleed, you know what I mean? Like if, if you don't get like Jaron Jackson in, you know what I mean? Like, and, and they don't, they don't, they don't guard too much. So, uh, maybe, maybe you could play some Charlottes, but again, but again, as you mentioned the other day, I mean, Charlotte themselves don't exactly ramp up the, the pace anymore either. Um, yeah. So, uh, the, the interesting thing, I guess, is, is on the Memphis side with all these Q tags and stuff like that. Like, and we just have to kind of see what's going on. You know, J- Jaron Jackson was ruled out. Uh, Jameson had a good game. Uh, and you have other guys that are questionable, Vince Williams Jr., or whatever. Uh, Laravia might be coming play again. The one guy again, I don't have, didn't have projected, but then Saberson does, so I have to just kind of just somehow account for that somehow. Is this uh, D. Giroux, Dijon Giroux? Um, again, I don't know how he's probably going to be only relevant if other guys, you know, guys are out. But I, I, I've mentioned that to everybody that I, I don't have him in my list right now, and and uh, he's been playing well the two games that he's played, I guess, well enough, I suppose. So uh, I have to adjust for that. And like everything else in Memphis, we just got to wait on the injury news. Yeah, Stevens, Jackson, Williams, um, all being questionable is definitely a, a thing. Uh, this is a horrible game. Yeah, it uh, sure is. That's a terrible <laughs> pace, terrible everything. Uh, my favorite play is probably Brandon Miller and as at the moment. And then just let's see what happens with, with Memphis would be what I said next. And uh, and it was interesting, by the way, just all day long, including up to lock with the Jamison play, because that was the one I was when I looked at your lineup at first before I looked at the you know the ownership. I just quick glance, 
Jameson, I thought was your your low owned play because that, all day long, and I, partly it changed when when Walker Kessler didn't start, but all day long, Jameson on on Sabersim was projected to be about three or four percent owned um, because you had the cornet play and because there was Kessler and then there was some some guys you could spend up on. So he ended up twenty percent owned in the big buy in. But I actually thought that, like, if if I would have set that lineup, I would have done it assuming that Saberson was closer to being accurate. But they were just completely couldn't no, have been. Did that, did that? Did that? Did that? Jameson steam happen later, like after Locke, because of of, of Kessler news, or, or I, I, that's what I think happened. Yeah, yeah. because I, as I mentioned, I put that stuff in like at six forty five, and that game I wasn't able to to deal with because right. that, I didn't get back to that. So. I get in a way like like unlucky, right? <laughs> that it ended up uh, being twenty percent. Um, but yeah, I was wondering what happened to that because I, I I felt as though when I looked at that lineup that that uh, that he was going to be a little on too. Um, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, all right, uh, let's move on to Cleveland, New Orleans. Yeah, I have a, I have a weird guy here. That wait, let, let me take a look at this. Yeah, for, I, I don't. I didn't even know he still played, and, and I'm getting like a, a decent amount of Larry Nance Jr. from New Orleans. Uh, I don't know exactly why or what or whoever, but I'm getting some of that. Maybe there's some random projection out there. Um, aside from him, yeah, I guess like a little Zion. I'm getting also, and I guess like right now I'm not getting any Cleveland. I suppose that it's because they think that. I guess Mitchell's going to be back, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's the case, then everybody just kind of, you know. But Mobley's still out, you know. Is, is it, isn't somebody a good play here? If Struess is still out, maybe somebody's a good play. But, you know, listen, Levert got moved to the 7,100. And if, if Mitchell's back, then Levert and Garland become less of a play. And, and, Gar and Jared Allen, hey, good good on drafting. He's moved him up to 8,400. Um, so maybe, maybe there isn't a lot to do with Cleveland after all. So, um, Talk to me about Larry Nance if that's of interest to you, or Joe Val even. Uh, what do you like here? Yeah, the, the the Larry Nance thing is just I think it's just completely because of the lack of ownership on the slate. It's not like he's even projecting like amazingly. No, um, lack of value, yeah, right? He he really hasn't like he, yeah he put up twenty eight fantasy points against Atlanta the other night, you know, and twenty one against Toronto um, a few nights before. But this has been a play that has worked far less than it's not worked this season. But so to play it as chalk, it feels, you know, again, a little fishy in a matchup that's the worst in basketball outside of maybe yeah. Miami. So, oh, one thing is just slam. Ion just, we haven't like, Trey Murphy is just gunning now. Um, he's been taking you know, a, t a ton, tons of threes. Like, it's, it's, I'm just trying to look and see exactly how many he's taken. Yeah. So, He's basically he's averaged taking 10 threes a game since the All-Star break. That's like right up there in the NBA. That's that's pretty much like as high he's as you go. Yeah. His numbers like he's put up in out of his last uh what six games for since the All-Star break. 43, 43, 45, 37. Yeah, it's got, yeah, it's got like 30 real life points. Like it's like yeah, because he's shooting so he's shooting so many threes. Um and uh he's a, he's one of the league's best three-point shooters. So that's a uh, that's kind of a, an interesting like just you know I guess a little bit of a get weird play on a, on a on a night on a night where a day where I'm trying not to talk about get weird plays because um, I, I, it, it hasn't you know a lot of them it's not even that the plays haven't worked it's just I mean yeah anyway um, all right so I don't know what I want to do here to be honest with you I, I I I like what you were saying about the Cleveland side it feels like there's supposed to be something. And I think that you could definitely take a you could definitely take a shot with Garland or Levert. Um, the prices are uncomfortable. Why Levert is projected at twenty five fantasy points is a little confusing to me. Oh wait, we have Mitchell back tonight. I'm sorry. I'm so that's, sorry. That's what I was saying. Oh, I thought so. I I I had it in my initial thing, and I just re refreshed it. Wow, that's weird. I had Mitchell is out. Well, that's what I was no, saying. Mitchell, with Mitchell, back, and I definitely cards become just, a little less appealing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that that one. It's it, it hiccups a tiny bit on my end still. Uh -huh. um, it's just it's just my internet is you know I'm working through it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think that I actually would pass. I, I was totally confused. I thought I thought it was stress who was back. I didn't not I, I had the wrong stuff on my sheet. 
Um, so my apologies, but yeah, I can't, I don't think I am going to be able to get to Cleveland in, in a down matchup. Uh, I do think Zion and Larry Nance um, are interesting enough. And I think Joe Val is at the price point. Like they're really, they really have phased him like out of their, you know, main focus. The minutes are like pretty consistently just completely down. We've seen this happen with Joe Val before, even go through long stretches, but then he'll just like, he'll go nuts in like 20 minutes. Like, Cause when he's out there, he's going to, you know, he's going to have, he's going to have chances, but I, I just think overall, I'm probably off of it. I just wanted to point out that 5,400, it's probably something we'll pull the trigger on with Joe Val soon enough if he's going to stay that cheap, but yeah, Larry Nance and Zion, the highest level of interest, nothing, nothing that special. So um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say something statistically ignorant, but just kind of uh, to just kind of just, uh, just say something funny. So, Luka Doncic and Scotty Scheffler are both 12,800. <laughs> um, and one of them is probably like 90% to be the top scorer on the slate. And, yeah. and, and, and that, that guy is going to be like eight, like 10% old. Um, now again, that's completely ignorant <laughs> because of the way pricing and the way the distributions work, but, uh, I just found it interesting that we got two twelve eight guys, and both 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 uh, both price tags seem uncomfortable. The only difference is it's like it's easier to find five k guys in golf to get to the 12, or six k guys to get there than yeah, I guess yeah. to find the three k guys in uh, on a day with, with with poor value. But nonetheless, I, I, I'm still getting like a pretty 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 reasonable amount of uh, of Luca despite the relative absence of value. Which just goes to show, I mean, like those points, those points are consistent. They are, I don't say guaranteed, but they're, they're, you know, when do you see a median projection of 68? You know what I mean? And, yep. and between you and me, like we know it's just, it's, it's like a floor. You know, it's like, it's like a 20% um, own seems pretty reasonable if you could, and, and I guess he's 20% own because you can make it work. And, you know, they're guys that we've, we've talked about Jalen Smith, Bruce Brown, Gary Trent. Even Isaiah Stewart, Grady Dick, 4,800, Larry Nance. So, so even if those guys don't exactly get there, you have, you know, 100 point upside from, from Luca. So, uh, I definitely like him. Uh, and if the Sims and if my lineup builds get to him, totally chilled, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody else in this game is probably just a pass for me. Although I am getting a weird, I mean, like twenty-five percent of Clay Thompson, twenty-five percent of on, of Andrew Wiggins for some reason, and uh, right back to another twenty-five twenty percent of uh, of Trace Jackson Davis. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at here. Yeah, I mean, it's it, you know, with no with no Curry, um, I think that that it's hard not to to have like all the the Warriors in play, like. Um, Look, Chris Paul may be old. He, he you know, they, he put up 44 the other night without without him. That's certainly a reasonable number. Um, Andrew Wiggins, uh, again, I I really want to see him actually have a game like before I really want to play him. But like, it's gonna happen at some point, I guess. Um, Draymond and Kamei, I I just feel like very similarly about all of them that they all seem like I could definitely make a case for them. But do I really need to? Is that like? You know, and, and is there one I really would would have more interest in than the others? Uh, I don't really like have one that I love, except for I, I'm interested in the Trace Jackson Davis for what he's doing. I, I you know it went the other way the other night. They didn't start him against uh, against uh, Wemby, and then he posterized Wemby and ended up having a monster game. He had a, an incredible dunk on him, an incredible move on him, actually. Um, and it's hard to posterize Wemby. So <laughs> shout, shout out to, uh, to Trace Jackson Davis, by the way, if you haven't watched it yet in that, in that game last night, that turned into a total shit show that, that, uh, Mem that, uh, Milwaukee, uh, that was partly my problem yesterday. I'm not really going to fault myself for not knowing Milwaukee was going to get absolutely hammered by Sacramento. You know what I mean? That's just, okay, fine. Sure. <laughs> like <laughs> there's not, nothing you can do about that, but there was a dunk by Andre Jackson in that game that is the highest another human being has ever been in an NBA game. And I don't even need to look up the history. It's, it's bizarre. Now he kind of jumped and bumped into somebody on the way. So you could say it gave him a little extra leverage, 
but it was bizarre. Look up the junk, the dunk by Jackson last night in that. Yeah, game. it was, it was, it was pretty absurd. It um, was pretty wild. Um, anyway, sorry to back to, to go back to tonight. Um, I, I don't really like, I, I don't know. I, I I'm, I'm still up in the air on the Warriors side. I do like the trace Jackson Davis, even off the bench. I just, I, I think they really like him. Um, and I think you're going to keep seeing minutes out of him. On the Dallas side, I, I'm going to do everything in my power to play Luca tonight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to because of the lack of value. My guess is that value op- opens up. If I don't do the Luca thing, my strategy right now would be to play the the, the guys against each other quickly versus uh, 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 Cunningham in the first game, and then uh, get the Jimmy Butler as my other 8K guy, rounded out with you know values like Dick. Um, I also think Siakam's a very strong play. Um, I also think, uh, what was the other one? Oh, one. Oh, Trey Jackson Davis, as I mentioned, is another value-ish play or Larry Nance would be a value-ish play. But my guess, just knowing the way the NBA works this time of year is that we're going to have value open up throughout the day. Well, you know, not, not that uh, this means anything, but if you want to want to sign, uh, the, 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 the highest I had ever seen somebody, uh, somebody tell me this is like going back was uh to bring it all full circle was was the aforementioned larry nance senior <laughs> when uh when he when he won the dunk contest or whatever it is remember he was like 6'10 you know so he would get up there he would he would pull pull dimes off the, off the top of the backboard and dunk and stuff like that so now when we're talking about the andre jackson we have his uh we have larry nance jr who's going to be chalked so Another, another yeah. relevant thing that I said today. So no, 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 it's, no, no, no. But I'm trying to figure something. I actually don't. I think I, I, I th- we'll see by the end of the day if Larry Nance is shocked. Because some, we got uh, guys talking about uh, Damian Jones tonight. Is is it official that Nyang is out? Like it, he said, Nyang was out, but I didn't have that in my board at first. Um, let me double check that because that actually could be. Look, uh, it, it seems like a horrendous play to think about Damian Jones. But I is I don't have Nyang is out. Where is this coming from? Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what the hell. Yeah, Damian Jones. I, like I, that's not interesting at all. That's that's a, that would be one of the worst plays I can imagine. Um, um, yeah, I don't I don't see anything the Damian Jones thing. Sorry, I just wanted to address that because I I thought that that. Oh, Nyang, maybe. That's what it was. Oh, maybe. Okay. I thought he said it was Nyang was out. My, my bad. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, I, I, again, I, I went through, we went through our stuff. We're going to do a, a golf thing next, which I'm very excited about because I actually yeah. love this tournament. It's been my, my highest profitable tournament so far in my golf life. Yeah, um, nice. it was the one, Sheets, in case you forgot, it was the one we both had the shot at the million um, that we had this, the second and the fifth in the lottery that one time. So that uh, was this thing? Th- that was the, well, was the Players' Championship. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, good luck to everybody and we'll see you later.